in 1 Kings chapter 11, we see the downfall of King Solomon. As you know, he was blessed beyond belief. God gave him wisdom and riches far above every man. But however, just because a man has wisdom doesn't mean he's always going to use his wisdom. God's given us a lot of wisdom, and a lot of times we don't use that wisdom. But in this chapter, we're going to see Solomon and the things that made him start going the wrong way. We're going to look at Solomon's girls, his gods, and eventually his grave. But first, let's look at his girls, his out, outlandish women. 1 Kings 11, 1 says, But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and the Hittites. So he loved many strange women. And that's the problem for many men even today. Uh, they love every woman they see even though they already are married to one. And the women they love are already married themselves a lot of times. And that's why it's great if a woman can just be a housewife and stay at home and that way you don't have a bunch of dogs drooling all over your wife for eight hours while she's at the factory it just works out better that way and a lot of times it, it doesn't work out that way for people but if you can it's just better that way but the bible tells us about strange women in proverbs 7 25 through 27 it says, Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So many strong men have been slain by her. A perfect man like Adam, he died for a woman. A mighty man like David lusted after Bathsheba and got himself in trouble. A strong man like Samson couldn't lay off the women. And a wise man like Solomon loved many strange women. And that's part of his downfall. A Christian man today should look for a godly Christian woman. A woman who, who dresses right and talks right and tries her best to live right. We are living in a time when the women are just as perverted as the men. And you can tell a man to uh, quit saying his cuss words in front of a woman, and she'll just say, that's okay because I say blankety-blank myself too. I mean, the women are just as bad as the men in the time we're living in. And we're living in a time when women aren't just turned on by touch or what men say to them, but they're turned on by sight just like the men are and that's not natural because it's natural for the man as filthy and vile as he is we already know he's a dirty dog he gets turned on by sight but now the women also get turned on by sight but see you need to make sure that you don't take a strange woman for a wife it says in proverbs 5 3 and 4 for the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And a lot of times many men like the uh, women who act like sluts or whores, and they won't give any attention to the godly women. And there's not many godly women left, and if you find one, that should be who the man goes after, is the godly women. It's not good for a man to be alone. And um, many men get the wrong woman, just like Solomon did, or women, as Solomon does. Just because a woman looks good doesn't mean you should marry her. And if she, has, she already has a boyfriend and she's talking to you behind his back, chances are that she'll talk to someone else behind your back. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians six fourteen, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? A Christian has no business taking a lost wife, just like Solomon has no business marrying strange women. 
He went after the women of the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Zidonians, and took Pharaoh's daughter to wife. He took heathen women and married them. But look again at 1 Kings 11, 1 and 2. It says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, the Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. And Solomon clave unto these in love. So the Lord said, Don't do it. But he did it anyway. He clave unto them in love. And those are strong words. Uh, Romans 12, 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. But he clave to these wicked women in love. He had a very bad woman problem. Ecclesiastes calls Solomon the preacher. And one of the best ways the devil can bring down a preacher is with the women. 1 Kings eleven three says, And he had... 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Notice he had princesses, and he was married to Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, maybe he took a lot of these women because he wanted to form a friendship between himself and other kings from other nations. But the man has 700 wives and 300 concubines, and Paul talks about how just one wife can slow you down on serving God. Now, it's God's plan for most people to get a wife. But if you don't have to have a wife, if you don't desire a wife, then Paul says, you know, it's better to abide as himself and not take a wife. Because he says, you know, you can serve God better without one, if you don't desire one, that is. 1 Corinthians 7.33 says, But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So imagine how Solomon felt. Not just one wife to please, but a thousand wives to please. First Kings 11.4 says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Now notice it talks about the heart being turned away at least four times in the first four verses. And the Lord will repeat himself for emphasis. He will repeat himself to try and warn you not to make the same mistake. And all of these strange women turn Solomon away from caring about the true God to being concerned with the gods of this world. And his heart was no longer right. It was not perfect like David his father's heart was perfect. But that's Solomon's girls. Now let's look at his gods. 1 Kings 11, 5 says, For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Notice he didn't just worship male gods, but also a goddess. Solomon was a female worshiper. He loved women more than the commands of God. And we are living in a time where men are worshiping women even today, uh, many men will sit around and admire a naked woman. They get overcome with lust for a woman that isn't their wife when the Lord specifically tells us not to in the Bible, and they are unlawfully coveting something. They're coveting another man's wife or just a woman that's just not their wife. And Paul says, covetousness is idolatry. We are living in a time when women also basically will demand worship a godly woman is the best thing in the world and a godly woman will put most godly men to shame with how godly they are but there are some wicked women that borderline demand that you make them the god of your life and they want you to put them ahead of the kids ahead of the bible and ahead of god himself and solomon clave to these wicked women in love and Solomon worshipped goddesses he worshipped a goddess named Ashtoreth and he worshipped Milcom 
In 1 Kings eleven six, it says, And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Such a wise man as Solomon, who wrote books in the Bible, is said to have done evil in the sight of the Lord, just like many of the other kings in the Bible. Notice it says he didn't go fully after the Lord. And maybe he still did desire the Lord a, a tad bit. Because he, he had all of that wisdom and wasn't using it. And knew what he was doing was wrong. Just like many times we don't use our wisdom that God's given us from when we've read the Bible and listened to preaching. And, and you know, did what God wants us to do. We got wisdom from doing those things. And then we go back and don't use that wisdom. First Kings eleven seven says, Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, Chemosh the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. So he is worshiping the gods of the Ammonites and Moabites, two nations that came from an incest relationship between Lot and his daughters. Lot and his daughters had an incest relationship, and from those two incest relationships came the Ammonites and the Moabites. And Solomon is worshiping the gods of those heathen nations. And this Molech god, false god, was a big iron god with a mouth. And people would throw their children into fire inside of the mouth of this false giant god. And that's what the Bible's talking about when it says they made their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. But Solomon went after these strange gods. 1 Kings 11, 7 and 8, chapter 11, 7 through 8 says, Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemish, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burn incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So Solomon built places for his wives as well. They wanted a nice place to worship their devils and their gods, and they probably went to church with Solomon a few times and got mad at the preacher and didn't like the music. They didn't like the hymns. They didn't like the, the King James Bible being used. They said, it's just too old-fashioned here. And they said they don't like that preacher and his negative message. So they said, Solomon, honey, please come to my church next Sunday. I know we have a different religion, but... We really do worship the same God, just in a different way. Or she probably said, all paths lead to the same God. And Solomon, with all of his wisdom, would have known she had no idea what she was talking about, but he did it anyway because, remember it said, he clave to them in love. And I'm just trying to relate this story to marriages today a lot of that goes on when a, a saved man marries a lost woman things like this happen you get turned away from god and you start sinking the gods of this world the god of this world the devil because you married into a relationship that god specifically tells you not to first kings 11 9 says and the lord was angry with solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. So, isn't that a scary thought? The Lord was angry with Solomon. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Our God is a consuming fire. And I don't want the Lord to be angry with me, but he can get angry with his kids. And we need to walk pleasing in his sight. We need to turn to God from idols. He doesn't want to share our heart with anybody. Our God is a jealous God. He was jealous of Solomon's girls. He was jealous of Solomon's gods. And what are you putting before the Lord in your life? The Lord appeared to Solomon twice. And it's a fearful thing to turn your heart from God when you have witnessed His presence in your life. 1 Kings 11.10 says, And commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. So Solomon... It's just not keeping the commands of God. Solomon didn't keep the Lord's commandments here again. And Solomon is the one that wrote in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, 
He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. If you're not keeping his commandments, you lack love for him. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. If you stop and think about it, all the Lord's commands are good. He didn't want Solomon to take strange wives simply because he knew that it would lead him to false gods who can neither see, nor hear, nor walk, and gods that are the work of men's hands, as the Bible says. Now let's see the consequence of Solomon's actions. In 1 Kings 11, 11, it says, Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. And this could picture how a Christian can lose his inheritance in the kingdom. If we get out of fellowship with the Lord, and we will end up not having any rule over cities in the millennial reign. We still get to go into the kingdom, but we lose out on those ruling over cities for being disobedient here in the flesh. In 1 Kings eleven twelve, it says, Notwithstanding in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. So Solomon wouldn't lose it in his days, but he would lose it through his son after he passed on. And notice he wasn't ridding him of the kingdom for David thy father's sake. Another picture of the church, because we will get to the go, get to just go into the kingdom for Jesus Christ's sake, not for our own sake, not for something we've done. David is a type of Jesus Christ, and Solomon in this chapter is a, is a type of the church who's trying to intermingle with the world, just like the church is doing today, trying to intermingle with the world. And 1 Kings 11:13 says, Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Once Solomon dies, there will be a split in the kingdom. And you'll have Judah and Benjamin as the kingdom of Judah, and the rest forming... And the Lord also steers up enemies for Solomon, which is a common judgment from the Lord. And I have had this happen in my life, where if I wasn't doing what I knew to be right, the Lord would steer up an adversary against me, maybe at work or just anywhere. 1 Kings eleven fourteen says, And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, he was of the king's seed in Edom. So this was royal blood going against Solomon. Notice also that this Hadad is from Edom. Solomon had been getting women from Edom, as we read about in the first verse there in chapter 11. So the Lord was going to use a man from a nation that Solomon intermingled with to be his adversary. And this pictures how you might can have fun and get along with the world for a while, but then a part of it will come back and bite you, just like it did to Solomon. 1 Kings eleven fifteen through 17 says, For it came to pass when David was in Edom, the place where he, Hadad was, and Joab the captain of the host was gone up to bury the slain after he had smitten every male in Edom, for six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom that Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him to go into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little child. So notice that Hadad fled from King David. He didn't want none of David as a kid. And now it says about Hadad in verse 18, if you look at verse 18 in chapter 11 of 1 Kings, it says, And they arose out of Midian and came to Paran. And they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt and to Pharaoh king of Egypt, which gave him a house and appointed him victuals and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tophanes the queen. So Hadad is going to learn all the smarts and wisdom of the Egyptians. And he marries into a big shot family. And then in uh, verses 20 and 21 it says, And the sister of Taphanes bare him 
Ginobath's son, whom Taphanes weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Ginobath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And if I'm not pronouncing these names right, I'm sorry, I just, I forgot to listen to Alexander Scorby a little bit before I did this. But it says, And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the host, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I might go to mine own country. So, notice that since he found, since Hadad found out that David was dead, he was ready to go after Solomon. But he didn't want to face a man of war like David. But he will go after the more, I guess you would say, soft son, which is King Solomon. He'll go after the ladies' man, King Solomon, that's just a, become a sissy. But he wouldn't go after a man of war like David. First Kings eleven twenty two through 23 says, And then Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me, that, behold, thou seekest to go to thine own country? And he answered, Nothing. Howbeit, let me go in anywise. And God stirred him up another adversary, Rezin, the son of Elida, which fled from his lord Hadadezer, king of Zobah. So you see that God will place enemies in your way as a judgment on you for your sins. And as a born-again child of God, the Lord will place these thorns in your flesh and He will see how you react to these adversaries and these messengers of, of Satan that buffet you. And if you recompense to them good for evil, then you pass the test. Because as Romans twelve seventeen says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And then in Romans twelve nineteen through 21, Paul says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So do good to the enemies that come up in your life. They may be there because of your sin, and they may be there as a test. Either way, the Lord will put the judgment right back on them just for sinning against you. While He used them to test you or as a judgment on you, He puts it right back on them for doing the evil deed to you because it was of their own free will that they let the Lord use them to, call, to bring tribulation your way. And Second Thessalonians 1, 6 says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Now, First Kings eleven twenty three through twenty five says, and God stirred up another adversary, Rezin the son of Eliada, which fled from his lord Hadadezer king of Zoba, and he gathered men unto him and became captain over a band. When David slew them of Zoba, and they went to Damascus and dwelt therein and reigned in Damascus. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, beside the mischief that Hadad did. And he abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. So you see, before for Solomon there was peace on every side for him. Then when he disobeyed, he had men gunning for him the rest of his life, and he chose, he chose wickedness over righteousness. And, and if he would have just kept the Lord's commands, he, he would have, wouldn't have had to face this stuff. 1 Kings 11, 26 says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zerua, a widow woman, he, even he lifted up his hand against the king. So even a fellow who was Solomon's servant named Jeroboam, who turned out to be a wicked king as we talked about before, he lifted up his hand against Solomon. And this Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And it goes on to say he was industrious. So he was willing to work and had a lot of zeal. And now he's turning his hand against Solomon. But now we have seen Solomon's girls, his gods, and his consequences for all his sin. And now let's see his gravestone. 1 Kings eleven forty and 41 says, Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, unto Shishak, king of Egypt. 
and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon and the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon even though Solomon sinned God didn't leave out the fact that he had wisdom however he doesn't leave out the fact that the devil is wiser than Daniel but all that Solomon did is written in the book of the acts of Solomon and if you want to see Solomon's writings, then read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. First uh, Kings eleven forty two through forty three says, "In the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem, over all Israel was forty years, and Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead." But notice that even rich men, wise men, and great men die. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Solomon lived for the flesh there at the end. He had all the girls you could want and all the money you could want, but he said it was all vanity. And the things that seem fun and pleasurable in this life only last for a short while. You get old, you get less attractive, and you're not going to be able to get the same kinds of girls you always did. You're, now you're old and you've lived your life for the flesh and for fornication and now you're lonely with nothing the best thing you can do is get saved at a young age save yourself for your wife have some kids and stay right with God read the Bible and pray and witness to people and just try to do as much work for God as you can and then when you're 60 or 70 years old and you've lived for God for 40 and 50 years You'll be so much happier than you would be if you had lived for the devil those 40 and 50 years. And now you're just old and ugly. And there's nothing more more sickening and evil looking than an old person who's wrinkled up. And it's just evil. You can see it in their eyes. They've lived for their self and the devil their whole life. And I mean, they, they're just horrible, grumpy people. Because they've lived for the flesh and the devil. And you don't want that for your life. You don't want to be making the same mistakes as King Solomon. So get saved if you're not. And if you are saved, live for God and don't live for the God of this world. And the Bible's clear on how to be saved. Paul gives us the gospel. He says, Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, he told the jailer, he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. He says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you know you're a sinner, and you know that you deserve hell, come to Jesus Christ the best way you know how, and believe on Him to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Believe on Him to be your payment for sin. Believe on Him and His finished work on the cross to pay for your sin debt that you owe. But this has been Solomon's girls, his gods, and his gravestones in 1 Kings chapter 11.